Hey, sweet listeners. Welcome to the NutSuite Podcast. I'm Ian McHugh, a co-host of this podcast and senior content marketing manager at NetSuite. Today, I'll be joined by Stephanie Weeks, the controller at Rayburn Electric. Rayburn Electric is an electric transmission and generation co-op serving customers in North Texas. Stephanie starts by explaining how the co-op model works and why that model is beneficial for members. Although Rayburn has been around since 1979, the company has grown rapidly in recent years. Stephanie walks through the challenges that fast expansion presented and where its previous Sage software fell short. As a controller, she details how moving to NetSuite in 2019 made life easier for the finance team. She then shares the impact NetSuite account reconciliation has made by auto-matching most of the company's transactions. Stephanie also tells the story of how Rayburn became the first customer to go live on NetSuite account reconciliation. After that, Stephanie describes how NetSuite planning and budgeting eliminated manual processes that led to inconsistencies. She touches on how the electric utility uses Suite projects, Suite People Payroll, and NetSuite advanced customer support, as well as the benefits they've seen with each. Stephanie closes with a few insights into what's on the horizon for Rayburn. Stay tuned, all of that and more is coming up next. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. So Stephanie, Rayburn Electric Cooperative is an electrical utility, but can you kind of fill us in on the details of what the company does and who you serve? Sure. We're a generation and transmission electric co-op, and we serve our four-member distribution co-ops in North Texas, uh, near the Dallas area. And for kind of added context here, how many customers do you serve in that that region? Through our four distribution member cooperatives, we serve about a half a million people in North Texas, uh, and we are serving uh, load in 16 counties. So right in your, your company's name is Cooperative, your Rayburn Electric Cooperative. Could you kind of briefly explain how an electric cooperative differs from your standard electrical provider? Sure. We are, um, first, we're a not-for-profit organization. That's that's not non-profit, like a charity. We are not-for-profit, though. Uh, we are owned by our members, which is different than most other um, electric providers. And uh, the seven cooperative principles actually mean a lot to us. Uh, One of those is actually uh, concern for the community. So not only are we providing power, we're thinking about that person at the end of the line every day. And, you know, when their power doesn't work, there can be dire circumstances. So why is that model kind of beneficial to members compared to your standard electrical utility that a lot of people out there are using? Well, because we're owned by our members, our our main concern is member value. Our mission statement is to maximize the value of our members' investments while providing competitive wholesale power prices while exemplifying integrity and excellence. So it's it's not about making money for the investors. It's about providing value to our members. And it's, you know, obviously kind of a unique business model, as you, you've described. What are some of the complexities and unique challenges that you would say come with with this model? Um, a little bit of it has to do with just the the ownership structure. You know, you go into a board meeting and, and not they're not just your board, they're your owners. So it makes it a little bit um, a little bit interesting there. But we have a great relationship with uh, all four of our members. So I know this was a little bit kind of before you joined Rayburn, which was at the, the end of 2019. But What kind of issues or limitations was the company running into that made it look for a new business management system? Um, I think it's just the the rate of growth that the company was going through. The the company is 44 years old, and uh, for the first several years, we were what's called a paper GNT, meaning that we really just bought power with a wholesale power contract and sold that to our members. And then we started to grow, had a change in direction uh, back about 2015. And as we added people and started adding additional services for our members, we just needed software that was capable of more more advanced um, data handling, I guess. 
What systems was the company using back before NetSuite came into the picture? Uh, they were using a product called Sage, which is, I've, I've used it to, to do a little bit of research and things, but it's it's very old school. Once Rayburn went live on NetSuite back in, in 2019, what were some of the kind of immediate improvements that it saw? How did it make life easier for you know people on your team, accounting and, and uh, people in kind of the finance function? Well, you know, one thing was that we didn't have to send paper invoices around a different desk and have them signed off on. We were able to create a workflow within NetSuite with parameters for uh, approval limits and things like that, as well as which uh, manager it gets routed to. And so that made that made things a whole lot smoother. Uh, we also love the ability to attach the documents um, within, uh, within NetSuite so that when we we're reviewing, we can open up any of the attachments to be able to have the support for it right there. And had you used NetSuite before, or had you were you familiar with it at all at I, that point? I, I was not, and um, it it did take me a little few months maybe to to get used to it. But once I really learned how to write save searches and use some of the um, some of the additional features, like I use NetSuite Analytics Workbook and run some queries and things like that. Once I learned how to use those things, I really liked the system. And how would you say, like you know, your control? I imagine you've You've worked with a lot of different accounting systems. What stood out about NetSuite when you first started using it compared to those some of those other systems you've used in your career? Um, again, I, th- I think it's the the flexibility of it. Um, with you can look at things multiple different ways. You can always uh, find attachments. We used it um, uh, that extensively during the audit. So um, I started December and our audit was in February, and so there were a lot of um, of audit request for documents that we couldn't find in the file. And so instead of having to panic or call a vendor, we were able to just look at the attachment and provide the information. The first module I kind of want to dig into is what's one of NetSuite's newest. That's NetSuite Account Reconciliation. You're, I think, the first customer to, to go live on it. But First, let's start with kind of why you needed NSAR, NetSuite Account Reconciliation. Um, what challenges did you face kind of managing data in Excel and what other maybe issues were there before you, you started using that product? We have, uh, we have kind of two distinct groups within the accounting group. One handles our, our primary billing to our members and the other is more the traditional accounting. As a result of that, they each have different responsibilities for different balance sheets accounts. But so we had multiple checklists. Billing had a checklist and accounting had a checklist, all maintained in Excel. They weren't combined. You couldn't tell if there was, there wasn't one central place where I could see every account and know if it was being reconciled. We also did a lot of extracting data into Excel and analyzing it to be able to um, know that the account balance sheet balances were correct. And it was just a lot of manual work every month. How did that kind of impact like the bigger picture of financial processes and just the financial management, if you will, of the company, those those issues that you just called out? It just meant we spent more time doing those manual tasks and not doing tasks that added value for our members. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Um, one NetSuite account reconciliation I kind of want to ask about specifically is the work list or, or work list view. How does that work list kind of help you monitor the status of all these different reconciliations that, like you said, are kind of happening in, in different departments or maybe with different different teams? Well, it's great because it shows each of the, the GL accounts, it shows the status of the rec as well as basically whose who's queue it is in, who's the, pre, who's the preparer, have they completed their part, has the reviewer uh, then reviewed it. And so it's one central place to see the status in a, at a glance. If you could kind of quantify it, you talked about, you know, time savings, less manual work, obviously. How much time do you think this reconciliation tool saves Rayburn each month when we're talking about closing the books and and running some different reports? Uh, Hard to say right now. Um, I think it will be significant, though. For example, our bank account, we're using transaction matching. And so the beauty of that is instead of manually going through the statement and checking off transactions against NetSuite, we can import a file. 
I would say at least 60% auto matches, another 20 or 30% probably are suggested matches. So it leaves just a few items that we have to manually look at and match to our bank statement. And can I ask, like, how did you guys become the first customer to use this? Is there, you know, a, a story behind that? Was it just you guys said we really need something like this? And we said, well, you know, are you willing to, to kind of be the guinea pig for this? No, there's actually a story. When I was at Sweet World last year uh, in the keynote address on the second morning, I believe, as they were showing some of the new features, there was a flash of the NetSuite account reconciliation on the screen. And so when I went back home and started asking our account rep, um, they weren't really sure about what it was or when it was going to be available. And so I followed up regularly um, to be able to get status on it. And so they, when they actually started, when it was going to become available, that they reached out to us to let us know, and and um, we implemented and moved forward with it. So. Persistence paying off there. It, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're talking to another NetSuite customer who's kind of evaluating NSAR, the account reconciliation solution, and trying to decide if it's worth the investment, what would be your, your kind of case to them? Or what? let's just even say what advice would you give them or you know, opinions would you give them on, on the product and, and maybe why they should use it? Yeah, I, th- I think it's great. I like that it is uh, integrated in with NetSuite that, um, you know, it's not... Uh, not that third-party products wouldn't work just as well, but I but I like the fact that it's one source for support and those types of things. So far, we're we're happy with it, um, and um, you know we're still learning um, how everything is going to work. But but I certainly think it's a it's a great way to really manage your account reconciliations. So Rayburn also uses NetSuite planning and budgeting. Could you kind of describe what presented the need for that application and how you thought it might help? Again, I think the the growth in all of the projects that we have had as a as a company um, made our, made our expense management more important. Our budgeting process was again very manual. A lot of Excel files where departments would submit their spending budget um, in Excel, and then we would need to consolidate it up. Um, so it made it uh, more uniform and consistent as far as. Uh, what we got back for budgeting. But then on the flip side of that, the ability for our managers to, during the year after we finalize a month, be able to go in and run reports and see how they're currently performing against the budget um, was one of the things that we really wanted to be able to do. And it it sounds like it, it helped with those things, but does anything stand out when you think about where it's helped the most or kind of the pain points it's relieved for um, your company? I, I would say the workforce planning and being able to budget for uh, current positions as well as open positions and then project um, the benefits that go along with that uh, was probably the, the biggest impact. Another thing that we hear about a lot with NSPB is uh, forecasts and scenario plans. Have you been able to kind of use those capabilities at all? And, and if so, how have, they, how have they helped? We haven't done that as much just simply because of the way that our business operates around cost of power, um, which is a pretty customized business model, I guess. And so we haven't been able to use that as much as we have just the, the budget to actual for, uh, reporting. Gotcha. And it sounds like in general, it's just kind of centralized everything, right? It's given you yes. one place. It's stopped, you know, people emailing their, their different budgets and data in with spreadsheets. Right. And it's put a little bit of the ownership on the on the managers mm-hmm. for them to um, basically enter their own budget into the software. So another product, uh, we, we have a few more to, to touch on here, but next up is, is Sweet Projects, which typically helps our customers with things like project scheduling, resource allocation, and billing. Now, I think Rayburn kind of has a a little bit different of a use case for Sweet Projects. Could you walk us through that a little bit? We do. We are um, we build a lot of capital projects that extend over a long period of time. It could take multiple years uh, and lots of different types of expenses. So what we use it mainly for is to track those expenses to the projects uh, as well as track employee time to those projects. And then once the project is complete and placed in service, then we're able to analyze the information and create the fixed assets. And what what like problem did that solve or how was that done before? And and was it messy? Again, it was it was everything was in an Excel file. And it was it was very messy. So 
one of the last modules I'll ask about here is is sweet people payroll. You're you know you're an accountant. You're on you're in charge of the accounting team. Um, how has that kind of simplified payroll processing the the sweet people payroll module? Uh, it's made it pretty automated. Um, before I started at at Rayburn, I believe they were tracking, they were calculating payroll in an Excel file every week. Again, that was okay when you had 10 employees or 12 employees, um, but we're at approximately 85, I think, right now, um, and you just can't do that in an Excel file. You know, with the time uh, cards, we actually have all of our employees enter their time. Payroll takes a few hours on Tuesday. Um, and most of that is not really even processing the payroll. It's the review of the payroll to make sure that everybody's getting paid what they what they need to. New hires are uh, appropriately set up, but the the actual processing of the payroll is very quick. And you said it's a few hours on a Tuesday now. What was it before? Again, hard to say since <laughs> it was before I started. But okay. and you know, it, it might have been it might have been a half a day. Uh-huh. And then they were also um, having to then print checks manually instead of having the direct deposit. So, and you also said the company. You know, you've talked about how quickly it's grown. You said you're up to eighty something employees, I believe. How quickly did that that kind of happen? Um, there were forty when I started three years ago. So we've more than doubled in three years. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then Rayburn also uses advanced customer support or, or ACS. First off, why did you decide to in, invest in, in ACS? We just needed um, a little bit more than the typical uh, support sometimes. I have a pretty extensive background with software. And so a lot of the things that, you know, the minor maintenance and administration I could handle. So by the time that it's beyond my capabilities, I needed somebody with a little more uh, expertise. And so we've had uh, the ACS team do things like we had an issue with the workflow where it broke one time. And so we had to get them to uh, to handle that. They also documented the process as they were going through it. Um, and so now it's it's reached more of an issue of I don't have the time to be the software expert. And so we depend on ACS to help us with those things. One way I've heard a lot of people describe it is it's like a, a resource that you can just kind of use as much as you need at any given moment. It's like it's like having an extra person, but they're not on your payroll. You pay for it, but you're right. a little bit different. It, would you kind of agree with that that description or the value of it? It's like having a NetSuite expert on staff as necessary. Yeah, I think I think that's great. And you know, no one can be an expert in every area. Mm-hmm. Area, and so if it is an area that um, they need to go out and find someone with a specialty in that, then they've got the resources to do that. It sounds like, you know, you, you've had a good experience with them, but are there any specific projects or times you could you could point to where ACS, you know, feel, where you feel like it helped you get more out of NetSuite or, or take care of a problem you were having? Um, a couple of different times. We've reached out to them for help with templates to be able to import fixed assets. You know, journal entries and things like that are really easy uh, to import, but the fixed asset module was just a little bit more complicated. Um, So they've helped us with that. And then they've also helped us when we decided to use the amortization feature within NetSuite uh, as far as getting that set up and making sure that that process ran smoothly. Awesome. So Stephanie, if you were talking to another controller who was in the market for a new ERP system, how would you kind of make the case for why they should at least, you know, consider switching to NetSuite, why it should be a strong contender? Um, I think really because of the the broad capabilities of it. You know, we we use parts of it, but as we continue to grow, we've we've looked at things like adding the advanced inventory module and then we like having the the modules that that interface with it, um, the open API and the fact that um, there are a lot of NetSuite partners that can help with third party things that, uh, you know, maybe we don't need, but for another company, it, there's a there's a wide list of um, third party software that will integrate with NetSuite. And in terms of like your team or just other people who work in the business, do you feel like they now see the value in it and, and now appreciate the system and, and how it helps you guys? I, yeah, I think so. Um, our executive team, they use the the workflow for, like I said, for being able to approve the invoices and um, things like that so that 
their time is not spent, you know, sitting around and waiting for accounting to send an email saying, hey, I need you to take a look at this. How would you kind of summarize how NetSuite makes your job easier as a controller when we think about the whole thing, all the different features and, and modules and stuff that, that Rayburn uses? Um, I like the I like the processes um, through it. I mean, it's it, it's an ERP system, so it has to handle certain basic things uh, for an accountant. But but I like the ability to drill in when I'm doing my review. Certain things that I drill into. We have save searches where we review prior period in, uh, invoices so that we can compare to what we're doing for the current period. And then our financial statements. We have kind of a a custom financial report, but we've been able to create that in NetSuite. And so our when we run our financials, it's it's quick. It's the format we need it in. Again, it's easy to it's easy to see everything from the home screen. Looking ahead a little bit, just at Rayburn as a company, you know, obviously you guys are very committed to, to serving your members, making sure your members get the best service and experience. But what do you guys kind of have planned for for how you're going to continue to support those those goals? Well, we're constantly looking for uh, new opportunities. We're looking to the the market to see what's happened. We've added a power supply group, uh, so a team that is actually focused on just the power supply forecasting and cost. There was a storm in Texas that some people may have heard about a couple of years ago, um, and uh, Rayburn made it through it. Some of some of them didn't, but. But we've we've reacted to that. We also look at new programs. Uh, we're looking into a distributed energy resource program that will be uh, it's in conjunction with Generac, and it would be homeowners that are that own uh, generators that would potentially participate in a program with us and help provide power for and help the, the and help network. provide power as well as help in peak times when. Uh, when power is in a shortage. And you, you talked about how quickly you guys have grown the last few years. Is that is that growth continuing or do you envision it continuing to, to grow quickly? I, I think it will continue to grow. Our CEO does not know, uh, does not know the word slow down, I don't <laughs> think. So we are, uh, we are constantly, like I said, we're, we're looking for new things and ways to improve our service. Awesome. And last thing I'll ask you is, how do you think NetSuite might, might play into those, those you know, future growth and, and expansion plans and just trying to serve your members better? Are there any products you're looking at, or is there anything that you just could, where you could kind of see NetSuite continuing to support you on that, that journey, if you will? Yeah, we're actually looking at the, um, the bill pay option or the, or the bill recognition. I think I have a, a call scheduled next week for a demo on that. That would be, um, you know, any time that we can automate things um, and be able to to capture automatically um, we're there were some um, limitations to it the last time I looked at it and I understand those have been addressed and so we're going to take another look at that so awesome seems like you guys are automating as much as you possibly can when it comes to finance and accounting and and that that's cool to see yeah all right Stephanie well thanks so much for for joining us thank you It's not every day you hear about a NetSuite customer that provides electricity, but it really speaks to the range of businesses our technologies can help. I also love hearing about how customers derive real value from NetSuite ACS. As Stephanie's examples demonstrated, that service can give you a specialized expert on demand who truly helps you get the most out of your NetSuite investment. That can be a game changer for our customers. A big thank you to Stephanie for joining us on this episode of the podcast. I also want to extend a thank you to our editing crew at Oracle and, as always, all of you for tuning in. If you want more episodes just like this one, make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us a rating and review. Thanks so much, and we'll talk soon. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.